This is quite a unique and special question, but especially when you take a look at 9.2.3. We're supposed to calculate the value of x as shown on the graph for 6 marks. What is the information we have? We have the current, which, which is 2.5 ampere, and the time, which is 10 hours. How do we go from current to time to x on the graph, which is basically the mass of the electrode? Well, you're about to find out. The first question, 9.1, we are supposed to define the term electrolysis. That is the use of electrical energy to produce a chemical change. The use of electrical energy to produce a chemical change. Usually, a lot of people will define it as a chemical process in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. That is also totally fine. That is 9.1. 9.2, on the other hand, the graph below, not drawn to scale, represents the changes in the mass of electrode T during electrolysis. We have the electrolysis of concentrated chromium chloride, CrCl3. We have two electrodes, R and T. The first question, 9.2.1, we're looking for the half reaction that takes place at electrode T. We have two electrodes, R and T. This is the mass. This graph is showing us the mass of the electrode T. As you can clearly see, the mass is increasing. And we know that the mass increases at the cathode. So T is our cathode and R is our anode. This is true for both galvanic cells and electrolytic cells. There is a mass increase at the cathode. So we need a half reaction that is taking place at the cathode. Okay, our electrolyte is CrCl3. The ions we have is Cl- and Cr to the 3 plus. Those are the ions we have. But this CrCl3, it is an aqua solution. So this H2O. Apart from these ions, we also have OH- and H. Plus, we know that N ions, they migrate to the anode, while cat ions migrate to the cathode. So that's why I have Cl- and OH- under the anode, and C to the 3 plus and H plus under the cathode. At the cathode, oxidation takes place. We're going to have oxidation of Cl- and let the cathode reduction takes place. At the cathode, chrome 3 plus will undergo a reduction. We can also see that from the net cell reaction that we are given. So the half reaction that will take place at electrode T, which is our cathode, will be Cr to the 3 plus plus 3 electrons to give us Cr. That is the half reaction that takes place at the cathode 9.2.1. 9.2.2, a current of 2.5 ampere passes through the cell for 10 hours. Let's calculate the total charge that flows through the cell during this time. So we have the current, we have the time, we are looking for the charge. Which equation can we use? The current is the rate of flow of charge. So we're going to have the current being equals to the charge divided by the time. In order to find the charge, we can simply cross multiply and have the current 2.5 multiplied by time, multiplied by the time, which is 10 hours. But we know that our time is supposed to be in seconds. So we're going to have 10 hours multiplied by 60 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 90,000 columns. This is the charge, the amount of charge that flows through the cell during this time, 9.2.2. The question you have been waiting for, 9.2.3, let's find the value of x as shown on the graph. Well, what is the question really asking us to calculate? We know that we have chrome being deposited at the cathode. So we need to calculate the mass of the chrome that has been deposited at the cathode. How can we do that? Let's look at the information we have. We have the charge. 
How can we go from charge to number of moles essentially before we ultimately calculate with the molar mass and find the mass? From the charge, we can find the number of electrons. From the number of electrons, knowing fully well that three electrons will result to one chromium atom, we can determine the number of atoms of chromium. From the number of atoms of chromium, we can ultimately find the number of moles using Avogadro's number, and then we can determine the mass. Let's go ahead and do that. The number of electrons is equal to the charge divided by the charge of an electron. This will give us 90,000, which is the charge we determined above, divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That is equals to 5.63 times 10 to the power 23 electrons. Let's use it to find the number of atoms of chromium. Well, three electrons will give us one atom of chromium. So we can say that the number of atoms of chromium is equals to the number of electrons divided by three. We're going to have 5.63 times 10 to the power 23 divided by 3. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 1.88 times 10 to the power 23 as the number of atoms of chromium. Now we can use the number of atoms of chromium to find the number of moles of chromium. The number of moles is equal to the number of atoms divided by Avogadro's number. This will give us 1.88 times 10 to the power 23. Everything divided by 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. This is equals to 0 0.31 moles. So we have the number of moles. We can go ahead and find the mass. The mass will be given by the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. 0 0.31 multiplied by 52 that is the molar mass of chromium if you put that in your calculator you'll get 16.12 x is just equals to 16.12 plus 2.2 this will give us 18.32 grams